Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we are going into our 27th session and covering the names of Al-Wakil, Al-Muqaddim, and Al-Muakhir, uh, names that have the meanings of the trustee, the one who brings forward, as well as the one who delays. So to begin with Al-Wakil, trust is the basis and the foundation of any true worthwhile and substantive relationship we know this that uh, if we have trust for someone if we have uh, trust within our relationships and within any of the interactions that we have it, it it makes it all that more wholesome it's it's what really defines that relationship it's really what strengthens it it's based on that level of trust you can have friendships or relationships with anybody but uh, that that trust is something that's earned. Trust is something that's worked on. Trust is something that is very much wholesome. And so, uh, but even to an extent, the trust we place in other humans, in creation, and uh, everything else that is around us, uh, whether it's even our objects, the things that we own, like our cars and uh, you know our homes, the roofs over our heads, all these different things, the trust that we place in these things is limited. Um, however, the trust that we place in Allah. Is, is the kind of trust that's not only given, but is also received holistically. Um, there's not a human equivalent to the trust that we give to Allah. Uh, Allah is al-wakil, uh, the trustee. And so when Allah tells us to trust him in the Quran, it's because he possesses all of the attributes required for us to fully trust him, knowing that he will not let us down, even though it may seem like by our confines, certain things might not work out. But at the end of the day, knowing that Allah is the one whom we trust, the best disposer of affairs, that uh, whatever things look like, at the end of the day, Allah is the one whom we trust and who has our best, uh, our best outcome and our best uh, end goal in mind, uh, as opposed to what we might envision for ourselves through our limited spectrums. Uh, Al-Ghazali explains that Al-Wakil is the only one to whom all matters are entrusted because our trust in people is necessarily deficient. Uh, since people cannot perfectly fulfill that trust, sometimes even the most trusting person or the most uh, you know, trustworthy person inevitably is a human being. They'll, they'll fall short at some point. We can't trust them for every single thing. They, they have needs of their own as well. They have, they have to fulfill their own uh, obligations. And uh, they don't have all the necessary qualities in, in this aspect. But Allah does, and Allah is capable, Allah is self-sufficient, Allah is free from any need, but Allah is also the one to whom we dispose our affairs and whom we trust because Allah can do that which any created being, any uh, creation cannot. Uh, this, as I mentioned, is a holistic trust. It's a complete trust, um, but understanding it's a difficult thing. It's something that's hard to uh, put holistic, wholesome, complete trust in anything or even in anyone, but Allah tells us often and time and time again, the Quran, to put our trust in him um, and that Allah is enough for us, uh, that, that Allah is not only, you know, the one to whom we should give our trust, but at the end of the day, uh, Allah is the one to whom uh, we, 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 we surrender this, uh, this, any kind of, you know, any kind of desire for, any kind of need for, that Allah at the end of the day is the one who is sufficient regardless of whether we trust Allah for a specific affair or not, Allah at the end of the day is sufficient for us. Uh, and furthermore, everything that's in the heavens and in the earth is belongs to Allah. Everything that, that we see around here, it may be something that we feel like we created this or we made that or we do this, we do that. Um, but all of this is in, under Allah's mulk, Allah's dominion. And Allah comforts us by saying, put your trust in the living God. And the Quran says, put your trust in the living God who never dies in one verse. And that Allah is the Lord of Al-Mashriq and Al-Maghrib, that the, uh, the East and the West, and to take Allah as a disposer of affairs in another. That, that Allah is not only to be the one to whom we put our trust in because Allah is the living God who never dies, but also that Allah is uh, is rules over all that which is, uh, you know, from from what the eye can see and beyond uh, is rules as far as that, but not just rules, sustains, caretakes, uh, you know, nourishes, provides for all that. And so it's 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 only proper that if we are if we are if we are living within someone's house, uh, that we're in that person's house, you know, we trust them to 
uh, provide you know basic basic certain things at least like you know we, we when we we've already trusted them uh, with with allowing us to be in our house they've trusted us you know coming into their house there's a mutual exchange of trust uh, there's certain things that we trust them with that when we go to sleep they they won't uh, harm us that uh, maybe even if we're if we're trusting enough that they'll be helpful enough to provide us with certain things and so in living in Allah's house and living in the world that is essentially like a uh, a home created for humanity by Allah. Uh, just to kind of see how how would we treat that? How do we how do we kind of look at it in, in in this aspect that we understand that Allah rules all that is around us? How do we treat uh, and how do we show our trust to Allah in these spaces? And so we're reminded by Allah that the trust we put is not that same one that we put in limited creation, but it is in an undying God. And to at the end of the day. Uh, as much as worry may consume us, anxiety may consume us, but to ultimately strive to not worry about certain things, because at the end of the day, Allah is the one who will be the one to whom affairs are dealt with. And so the name of Al-Wakil teaches us two main things. First, it's that we need to work as hard as we can with the means that we're given, with the things that we've been given, the, ha the cards that we've been dealt, work as hard as we can, because being intimately acquainted with Allah uh, means having conviction, it means having confidence, uh, but it also means having internal tranquility as we work, as we work hard, as we strive, because ultimately we surrender to Allah, and that which we are working towards is towards Allah, it's not towards any um, tangible, it's not towards any, um, you know, any means that will just, you know, dis dissipate or disappear, uh, it's towards an, uh, it's towards a uh, initiative and towards an effort, towards an end goal to which you cannot put any value on. And the second lesson is that as we work for a particular result uh, through the avenues that are available to us, we should have absolutely no doubt that Allah will be the one to get us through whatever outcome is best, because indeed Allah is the trustee and Allah is trustworthy. So understanding that if something doesn't work out for us, in in, the, in in a certain way, or we put the trust in Allah and something doesn't happen as we would like it, doesn't mean that Allah um, has failed us or anything like that. But to see that Allah can see the whole image uh, and the whole tapestry, and we're just operating in a small framework. So being able to have that moment to pause, step back and take a look how much, uh, what, what, what benefits can certain things get, get, you know, happen based off of uh, you know, what we hope would have happened, what we hope didn't happen, and try to see more of the fuller picture. So we strive and we want to have trust because ultimately the result that we get is from Allah. Um, there's uh, a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that lifts up how, uh, you know, we, we, we need to rely on Allah, like just, just, just relying on Allah truly, um, in a sense of relying on Allah faithfully, similarly to birds. Uh, as birds are provided for, they go out in the morning um, and they return full. So if we are to trust Allah fully, uh, we, 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 we are like in the sense these birds where we may go out um, in, in, in our state of hunger, but at the end of the day, we come back uh, nourished in different ways and being able to be mindful of it, that uh, as Allah provides for these birds, Allah also provides for us even more so. Um, you also have that the striving is exemplified in stories uh, like that of uh, Hajar, um, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that uh, Hajar alayhi salam was, uh, was, was you know, running in the desert for her child's survival, was, was going uh, back and forth, back and forth to try and, uh, you know, try and just bring her uh, child some water and, and try and find something there. But even, uh, but, but, but seeing that, you know, understanding as she said that Allah will not abandon us, she still strove, literally strove to uh, find survival. Um, and so she, you, you have this concept of tying your camel, but you put your trust in Allah. You put your trust in Allah and you tie your camel still. You still do what needs to get done. Um, and even in the moments when we think that Allah isn't there or Allah has left us out, we, we, we work on this aspect of tawakkul. Uh, the tawakkul is not just trust, but keeping that undying hope and desire for Allah alive. So how do we live with these names? First off, we remember that Allah is al-wakil, even in the difficult times, that when we trust Allah, we trust Allah whole, holistically, even in the outcomes that we don't uh, ideally want to see or may not be uh, immediately satisfied with or uh, are not pleased with. Um, additionally, when uh, we want to remember this name, when uh, our means decrease, uh, that our hope should not, uh, that our tawakkul should not, that the trust that we put in Allah should not, uh, because our means are not definitive of Allah. Um, we don't uh, want to use uh, sin as a means in terms of just how we strive in this world uh, to do it in a way that is halal, to do it in a way that is appropriate uh, from 
the eyes of Allah. Um, we want to lessen our worries about the future, knowing that Allah is the disposer of affair. And we want to do our best to strive holistically with our uh, physical selves, our mental selves, spiritual selves, submitting with our hearts and uh, ultimately knowing and coming to recognize and acknowledge Allah, not just as Allah, but Al-Wakil, the one whom we can trust. So the last two names we discuss here are Al-Muqaddim and Al-Muakhir, uh, the names that are the, the one who brings forth and the delayer. So going off of this aspect of putting certain things off or accelerating certain things, we trust Allah. And this trust is underlying both of these two names. So Allah is Al-Muqaddim, the one who brings forth, as I mentioned, and Allah is Al-Muakhir, the one who delays. And we see disparities all around us in the world um, that uh, are especially in time in matters of wealth, material wealth. Uh, just access to certain social services or healthcare, different things that are coming about, basic equity uh, for so many people. And so all of these disparities are uh, around in the world, but especially in time in the matters of wealth and material accumulation. And so, uh, you know, even personally in our lives, you know, things may happen either too fast or not fast enough. Uh, we may see that hey, you know, we, we, we've had certain developments in our life that just cannot get happening soon enough, like we just cannot find a job soon enough, or some things are happening too fast, like sometimes our, our life goes in a little bit of a downward spiral, or sometimes our job changes, and then 10 other things change, like it's happening a little bit too fast. So to find balances in these times is when we really need to get acquainted with these two names, Al-Muqaddim and Muakhir. You have the example of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, um, and this aspect of delaying of things you see in his time in prison, you know, his cellmates, you know, kind of being released or, or being taken to uh, being, being put to death in a sense, but uh, Yusuf alayhi salam kind of remaining behind and at the end of the day, seeing the result that was brought about his prison sentence brought about him becoming a minister uh, to his people, uh, seeing that there are certain things that there's wisdom in delaying certain things. We, we are in a time of instant gratification where we need to be uh, satisfied now, now, now. Um, and we're sometimes we're losing that that aspect of the the delayed reward, and uh, we kind of want to uh, reemphasize this, especially with respect to these names. So though everybody else might be moving forward uh, and whatnot, and you might be feeling stagnant, like man, I, I just graduated from college, my rest of my friends are uh, getting jobs, or like they're going to grad school, and uh, you know I'm now I'm back at home with my parents, or now I'm like you know just I'm still struggling, I'm I'm, I'm in my last year. How do I kind of get by? Or maybe you're past graduation, maybe I've been in this job for so long and everybody else is like way advanced. How am I, uh, you know, why, why am I like, you know, being put back? Why can't I be like them? Uh, we, we want to lift up that uh, Allah is there, not just uh, at, on the holistic, but Allah is there for you specifically. And only Allah will judge and see you and that Allah does not see us or judge us based on these material accelerations that the Prophet lifted up how uh, certain people's uh, reward in this life for certain people's like uh, their, their enjoyment in this life has been accelerated for them uh, and, and other things have been delayed for them. And so even in his case, certain things were accelerated, certain things were delayed for them. And we'll go into that in just a second, but just to see that Allah sees you for here, not for what's out here. And so another meaning from these names is that from Al-Ghazali is that these mean that Allah promotes uh, or elevates those servants um, whom Allah brings close to him and then banishes or pushes uh, the, or has or th banishes those who he pushes away, meaning that those who strive to come close are brought close, they're promoted, they're elevated, and those who disobey and reject are held aback. So not just seeing things that are withheld, things that are brought forth, but also us as, as humanity being brought forth closer or being delayed and pushed away. So Allah might give people gifts and may uh, give things to people and it may appear that because they're blessed in this world, that they have the nicest cars, the nicest houses, the biggest wealth, all this different stuff that may seem like they're preferred, that they're doing something right. Allah must love them. Uh, but that's not at all the case. We see the story of the Prophet Sallallahu when uh, Umar radiallahu anh goes to uh, visit him and uh, see, sees him, you know, in his chambers in, in the mosque after he has a, like, you know, a, a dispute with his wives and he comes to check in on him. And he sees the Prophet sitting in very, you know, what's what we might call destitution, but like very much like a, a very uh, minimalist, simplistic life uh, and setting where he's sitting on basically like a, a cot uh, with like, you know, a leather um, backing, palm fiber backings and, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a vessel for water. Um, and Omar starts to cry and, and says that, you know, the, the kings of 
Persia and of Rome and all these places, they've got throne rooms of gold and all these different things and the finest things. And you're the prophet of God. And look at, look at you, like, how, how are we treating you? And the Prophet says that like, you know, he, he rebukes him a little bit, but he gives him a teaching moment. He says, this is what we were brought here for, Omar. Have you forgot what our purpose is? That uh, Allah has, uh, has accelerated for them. Allah has given them, uh, has accelerated what their reward is in this life or has given them the fruits of uh, what their enjoyment is in this life and what we are, what our reward is, what we are going to be working towards is, uh, is yet to come. So what has been for these people racing for this life, it's been given to them. It's been accelerated. It's been brought forth for them. But what is to await us has been delayed and it is going to be even better than what we see here. So looking beyond the health, the wealth, looking beyond the externalities, looking at the heart, looking at our actions, looking at our intentions as in this moment. So how do we live with this? these names? First and foremost, we trust in Allah's timing that uh, we do the best that we can wherever we are, but at the end of the day, we remember that Allah has given all of us good and brings forward those of us who do good and brings forward uh, and expedite that's what, that which is good, but also holds back that which is bad, holds back that which uh, those who are uh, coming in with bad intentions. So when we trust Allah's timing, we recognize that our timing and our understanding of it, we're coming, we, we are, as humans, we naturally change based on how our, our society expectations changes, how our social interactions shape us, that sometimes we become a people of instant gratification. Sometimes we're not people like that, but at the moment we're kind of in this time of instant gratification. So understanding that if we don't get something immediately, it's not that the end of the world, it's not because it's not meant for us, but we see, we try to understand that and that incorporate that Allah's timing is what matters. Our timing is is based on so many other, uh, you know, things that, that might be more selfishly driven, whereas Allah's is holistically driven for what's best for us. So we ask Allah to be our trustee, to allow us to trust in Allah fully, to trust us, to trust him, um, and to allow us to be brought forth closer to Allah, to, to be delayed from anything that may hold us back from Allah, but also to bring forth those things which bring us closer to Allah, to delay those things, to hold back those things which uh, keep us distant from Allah, and that Allah brings forth all the blessings that we have earned in this world, but delays any negativity, any punishment, anything that may hold us back um, in, in, uh, indefinitely. So until we ask this, Allahumma ameen, uh, and until next time, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.